Hi, my name is Mike, um, and I am one of the education consultants here at The Props. I'm also an expert, I'd like to think so at the very least, when it comes to mathematics, having done four master's degrees in the subject, and having worked as an academic tutor uh, in mathematics, I've had the privilege of, of having a 100% success rate with all of my students when it comes to passing their exams, whether that be GCC, A-level, or even sort of final year undergraduate level mathematics. Um, in today's video, it's a very, very fun one for me. I get to look at Tier Maker and I get to prank all of the different universities in the UK based on the strengths of their mathematics degrees, their mathematics departments, their research output, and perhaps even something to do with career opportunities as well. And I should probably give a little bit of a disclaimer that actually none of these are terrible universities to go to. Um, if you're already going to a mathematics degree, you're already making a very, very good choice when it comes to your employability. And to be honest, most of what you do outside of your education is actually what is going to make you an attractive candidate when it comes to jobs as well as research. So starting with the S tiers, um, I've got five universities that are currently in mind. We obviously have to include Oxford and Cambridge, Cambridge being really close to my heart, but we'd also like to include Imperial, Warwick and UCL on this list. So I'll just add those in now. Um, next, we get into our BT, BT universities require um, less academic uh, grades or less academic requirements, but still have a very, very good reputation um, and are still perhaps really, really good for their research output. So I'll just add those BTs on now quickly. Yeah, so the last B tier that I put down was University of Exeter. Just to give an example of what could go in here that's really, really good. It's got very, very strong ties to the Met Office. So actually, if you want to go into a career in weather, they actually offer a lot of courses in climate science and the mathematics behind that, as well as a lot of courses in fluid dynamics. I certainly had a lot of fun there, actually, during my undergraduate degree. So it's something I highly recommend um, just from experience. Um, let me just add in the rest of these B tiers before we continue. We then go down onto our C list um, universities. Uh, again, still very good universities to go to. In fact, just to reiterate, there's no bad universities on this list. If you're going for a C or D tier university, you can still get a very, very good career in mathematics. And even if you want to go into research, um, you still very much can, but you do have to make sort of efforts perhaps to do wider reading if you want to get perhaps to onto a really, really academic. Uh, sort of degree or something a bit more rigorous, um, but these are what I would place from this list on C tier. Okay, and then finally moving on to my definite D tiers. Um, I don't really have many for these. These are the universities where actually, you know, have very, very sort of minimum grade requirements and are great places to go to perhaps if you really want to get into mathematics but you don't necessarily have a great sort of academic performance. Maybe you weren't necessarily too well when you were taking your A-levels, or maybe you didn't quite take the right combination. These are really, really good places to be able to go to, to be able to sort of build on your proficiency. And I do believe everybody should try to get into mathematics if they can. Um, so still universities to go to, but are a little bit less rigorous. Um, We're going to include not too many of these from this list, Aberystwyth, and we're also going to, um, I think, um, I think from this list that would be the only one I would add. Now we have like a few universities that are left that from personal opinion, I think I might just be able to add to this list. So I probably would put Queen's University um, almost a bit controversially on a B tier, but it seems to be making its way up uh, in league tables uh, a little bit. So I could see that rising very, very soon. Um, King's College London, I definitely would put that in an A tier. Um, there's a lot of universities in London that are very, very strong for their mathematics. Um, but if you compare that to, for instance, LSC, a lot of the mathematics you probably would be doing would be geared towards maybe statistics in terms of like general proficiency. Um, York, I would also put maybe as a safe B, but I also have a feeling that's going to be moving up as well. It's very, very good for their pure mathematics. Um, and uh, Strathclyde uh, or Sterling, I definitely would put in, in these because they're very generous with their grade office. And Strathclyde, I'd probably put a little bit higher than that. 
uh, I might put in uh, sort of around the C or the Bs as well, if I had the option to put it in between, I guess I would do. Now, just to uh, maybe reiterate a few questions, you'd probably be thinking sort of what university is right for you if you're deciding to apply to university to study mathematics. And it comes down to a bunch of different factors. For me, my first university was actually the, a university that was in the Russell Group that wasn't too far away from home. I wasn't necessarily too experienced in, in travel, so that was a really, really big factor for me. It could be that maybe that isn't so much of a factor for you on the personal side of things and you just want to go for the rigour. Um, so I would say if you know you really would want to go for Oxford, Oxford or Cambridge and you have the academics sort of to back it up, not only just from the work that you produce and sort of recommendations from your teachers, but you're also really active in those, so, you know, your reading, your super curriculars and your engagement in the subject outside of these things. Those are definitely things that you should be going for. Um, you do want to make sure that actually when you're applying for university though, um, when you are actually on the UCAS form and you're giving your like five choices, it can't all be S tier or A tier. I definitely would encourage at least one or two universities to actually be outside of the Russell Group, a little bit lower down, so that you definitely are going to be safe in terms of getting onto these degree courses. And saying that, some of the universities uh, I put down are open to clearing as well. So if you don't quite um, match your grades, there are still a few choices on uh, this list that you can actually get onto for mathematics um, if you apply for clearing, which is um, a really, really nice thing to be able to do. Um, but in terms of the grade requirements, you know, all of the things in S tier, really, if you're aiming for, for some of those universities, you are wanting to be getting two A stars and an A minimum at A level, possibly more, actually, because it tends to be that either general performance um, in secondary school and high school um, is going up, um, or, and as a result of that, they might make sort of like qualifications a little bit um, difficult to be able to pass at high school level. Um, and there are ways of getting more more competitive with that. So, and they also require admissions tests too. There's quite a lot of different types of admissions tests. Um, like we have the TMUA, you have the step papers, you have the MET. Um, and in some cases, also people take the Advanced Extension Award, which is something specific to Edexcel that follows very much an A level mathematics format but has all of really, really tough questions that you tend to find at the end of those papers altogether. Um, something is, um, is, it's really, really important to be able to bear in mind when you're making these decisions that you don't necessarily go for all S tier and you really try to balance out your choices of universities across the board. Um, and there is a question, you know, of how important is it that you get into your top choice university? If you really, really want to go into research or if you really, really want to go into uh, work, um, it doesn't fully matter as to what university you go to. The only exception really I would give to this just because I've been working with a lot of finance students recently is that if you really want to go into say like private equity or mergers or acquisitions or down that route, you really want to try to get into a London-based university more than anything else just because of the industry connections that are on your doorstep. Um, but other than that, there's lots of good places for different reasons. I mean, Edinburgh is a gorgeous city. They have a really, really good research centre for bioinformatics that takes on a lot of mathematicians for research there. Um, we also have, I mean, even if we look at one of the, the D-list here universities, uh, the University of Aberystwyth also like, are able to place quite a lot of, of industry connections and it tends to be very, very good when it comes to student satisfaction as well on their courses. Um, so I, in terms of making choices with the universities, I'd say have a look at league tables, have a look at research performance, have a look at student satisfaction and have a look at employability. And then maybe also think how far away from home do I want to go to be able to study mathematics. So there's a lot of choices that you need to be able to make. There's not necessarily a right or wrong one, but you've got to go with what you're happiest with. <laughs> and if you find it useful, uh, perhaps to get one-to-one -one consultation, then take a look at the information on screen right now um, and get in touch with us and we'd be more than happy to help you uh, in getting on to the uh, university of your choice and maximise your chance of success and an application. 
Um, but until we hear from you, if you are applying for universities, we wish you the best of luck and we do hope to hear from you soon. <laughs> Take care.